exclusive contract with Velu Novel Network Novel. Three Kingdoms Yellow Turban Begins, Marquises are teased by me during the late Han Dynasty, Liu Bei became a famous thief with big ears. In order to avoid the tragic future of the Han people being reduced to two-legged sheep and the chaos of the five barbarians, he did not hesitate to lead Guan and Zhang to rise from the yellow scarf. He, who possesses a divine perspective, will never allow himself to fail like the original owner, and then waste ten years in Shinano. It is not allowed to have any carelessness after the loss of Jinzhou. Zhao Lai Yiling became a bitter grudge, and Kong Ming died before he succeeded in his expedition. So, he traveled thousands of miles, fought fiercely in the central plains, and eventually became an emperor. Chao Chao Lu Bei, with millions of troops, is known as the god of war. He must win in battle and capture in attack. He is the ultimate enemy in the world. I am inferior to him. Sun Quan. Lonely hatred. If I had known that Jiang Dong would be destroyed by Lu Bei's hands, I should have joined forces with Chao to resist Lu at the time of Red Cliff and destroyed this scumbag first. Lu Bei. After fighting alone for so many years, can't you still enjoy it? Keep playing music, keep dancing. Felu Novel Network reminds you that this novel and its characters are purely fictional. If there are any similarities, they are purely coincidental and should not be imitated. Chapter 1 When is the time of travel bad, but unfortunately? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Yuzhou, Chua County, take a look, take a look. A top-dot-quality bamboo basket, don't miss it if you pass by. Candied haws on a stick in the bustling crowd, a burst of noisy voices woke Lu Bei up. What's the situation? Where am I? I haven't seen this scene before, have I? Lu Bei, who opened his eyes in a daze, looked at the antique scene before him that he had never seen before and was completely bewildered. At this moment, I am kneeling and just woke up feeling a bit numb in my legs. I don't want anything else for now, let's get up slowly. At the same time, I noticed that I was wearing coarse linen clothes, and there were some grass shoes and other objects on the stall in front of me. The people around me were all ancient people wearing long robes. Waves of noise entered my ears. Such a real feeling, feeling the fresh air at the tip of my nose. As a VIP user of Mr. Lu, Lu Bei immediately understood what was going on. Without any surprise, I had already traveled through time, and the thought of this made me feel a bit at a loss. Who can I reason with for this Nima? I finally managed to be a good person, but when I saw that I thought my little sister had fallen to the ground, I wanted to go over and help. Unexpectedly, a car that suddenly lost control would crash itself off the roadside before it could take action. This story tells us that you can't help the little girl on the roadside. And travel. At least travel through a better identity. Looking at the current situation, it is not surprising that the identity I have traveled through is from a poor family background. On a certain road, when watching others travel, they are all descendants of the immortal family and the backs of the princes. Why do you become someone who buys grass shoes when you get here? Do you want to be such a fool? What kind of wrongdoing have I done myself? Lu Bei, who had been brainstorming for a long time, remembered the dazzling light before crossing over. By the way, it seems to light up from my own chest. Is it a jade pendant? Lu Bei hurriedly touched his chest, feeling that the jade pendant was still on his chest, and instantly breathed a sigh of relief. This jade pendant can make you travel through time, there must be secrets you haven't discovered. Perhaps the reliance on which I have traveled through time is this jade pendant. Lu Bei opened his clothes and took out a large amount of jade pendant, staring blankly. I saw the jade pendant on my chest, which was completely snow.white and transparent, with a jade dragon carved on it. Isn't that right? I have been wearing my jade pendant for many years, it's a bit different. Although the shape is still the original, my jade pendant has always been green, and the Lu character engraved on it has not changed. After repeated research for a while, 
there was no result, so Liu Bei had to put the jade pendant back first and wait until later to study it. After all, what happened today was beyond his understanding. After this period of buffering, Liu Bei's legs no longer feel numb. He casually moved his hands and feet and found that his body was full of a sense of strength, more than ten times stronger than his previous self. With both hands working hard, he felt like he could kill a cow. Just as Liu Bei was getting familiar with the changes in his body, two young people ran up to him and excitedly called out to him. Shwanda, stop setting up a stall. Are you calling me, Shwanda? Liu Bei looked left and right in confusion and found that there were no other people nearby. The person who came didn't pay attention to Liu Bei's confusion and immediately added, Hurry up and come to Ma Shi to find us. It's so lively there now. I heard that the great sage of Taiping Road is going to preach there today. After speaking, the two of them hurriedly left. Shwanda. A great and virtuous teacher. Buy grass shoes. Am I Lu Bei? Lu Bei was subconsciously surprised in his heart, could he say that he had traveled through time and become Lu Bei? Looking at the grass shoes on the stall in front of him, Lu Bei fell into contemplation. I didn't expect this jade pendant to be so extraordinary. It made me reach the end of the Eastern Han Dynasty and even traveled to the famous Lu Bei. Uncle Lu, that's the future hegemon who will divide the world into three parts. Unexpectedly, as an ordinary poor loser, he would cross over and become the Emperor Zhao Lai of Shu Han. Liu Bei is quite familiar with Liu Bei because he had a fondness for the Three Kingdoms era in his past life, so he likes to read novels about the Three Kingdoms whenever he has free time. Especially Liu Bei, who later stood up, he really liked it. After all, that catchphrase can be said to be well known all over the world. Keep playing music and dancing. Liu Bei's life was a magnificent one. He worked tirelessly throughout his life to restore the Han dynasty, and even more so, he suffered repeated defeats and battles. Many people say he is a person who seeks fame and reputation, full of hypocrisy and righteousness. But in this era of fierce competition, only Liu Bei adhered to the principle of benevolence and righteousness from beginning to end. If a person spends their entire life practicing benevolence and righteousness, regardless of whether they pretend to be true benevolence or not, this is very precious in chaotic times. It is precisely because of this that Liu Bei was able to transform from a low-dot-level weaver of mats and shoes to the later founding emperor of Shu Han. Unfortunately, in the middle of Emperor Xian's entrepreneurship, he was unable to complete the great cause of restoring the Han dynasty due to the use of all the funds from the dance club. But the timing of my time traveling is not very friendly. When was it bad to travel through time, but it happened to be Liu Bei before starting his own business. During this period, Liu Bei was famous for his low starting point and poor start. Isn't that a challenge for me, Pang Hu? Based on the few words just now, it can be inferred that it appeared before the Yellow Turban Uprising. We will investigate the specific year later. With such thoughts in mind, Lu Bei, it's not Lu Bei, and he can't care about the grass shoes on the stall anymore. He quickly walked towards the horse market, wanting to see what stage the Taiping sect has reached. After paying careful attention along the way, Lu Bei also understood the time point he was in. It was now January of the seventh year of Guanghe. That is to say, one month before the Yellow Turban Uprising. Does this mean that my good friend's second and third younger brothers are about to be credited? Chapter 2 Nowadays, there are beliefs taught by me all over the world. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Thinking of this incident, Liu Bei was very excited in his heart. Guan Yu and Zhang Fei were not only enemies of 10,000, but also loyal to Liu Bei. Unfortunately, in the past life, the famous five tiger generals under Liu Bei's command all regretfully came to an end. Guan Yu was defeated and died on the spot, Zhang Fei was ambushed by his subordinates while he was sleeping soundly. Huang Zhong was ultimately killed by an arrow, Ma Chao also died of depression, and Zhao Zilong ended up with unfulfilled ambitions. 
these people ultimately fail to fulfill their ideals and aspirations. Since I have now traveled through time and become Lu Bei, I will no longer let the five tiger generals end in hatred, Lu Bei said silently in his heart. Shuanda, come over. Lu Duran saw Lu Bei from a long distance and waved at him. Lu Duran is Lu Bei's cousin. His father was Lu Yuanqi, who often supported Lu Bei because his family was poor from a young age. Lu Bei heard a greeting in his ear, and his mind was filled with information about his past life. He quickly walked towards a few people. Except for Lu Duran who greeted him, the other two people I didn't know, and the young man who initially spoke to me at the booth was also not here. The crowd is a bit crowded at this moment, with a sea of people. Many people in the crowd were talking loudly. Duran, what exactly happened here? Lu Bei has not yet grasped the situation. Shuanda, just now someone here was holding a piece of talisman paper and burning it in a bowl. After letting a seriously ill patient drink it, the patient actually recovered. Lu Duran's face was still full of disbelief now, they all said that it was the talisman paper left by the great sage and virtuous master. Upon hearing this, Lu Bei couldn't help but curl his lips. It turned out that these scams had been popular since the Three Kingdoms period. Others may not know the tricks of these people, but after experiencing the information explosion in their past lives, would one still not understand them? Shwanda. Along the way here, there have really been many new things happening. Lu Duran usually likes to be lively, and at this moment he looks very excited. Really, what else happened? Lu Bei looked up at the crowd in front of him and asked without looking back. Our Shua County has suddenly seen a large number of refugees, who are quite unique. Lu Duran said. It does look a bit different. The sight and news that came all the way also made Lu Bei nod. Who does this look like a refugee? It's simply better than ordinary people. That's right. Lu Duran continued, the refugees we've seen have never had enough to eat and their clothes are in a mess. Unlike these people, they not only have food and clothing, but also carry tents and weapons with them. This is not a refugee. Upon hearing this, Lu Duran's two friends immediately spoke up, who said not. These people can all be called guardians. With these people, Chua County will no longer be afraid of those bandits and mountain bandits from now on. That makes sense. Maybe we can pay these people to protect us later. A man in a luxurious robe agreed. Let these people protect you. Upon hearing this, Lu Bei beside him could only chuckle. If you think you can protect these people now, there will soon be a large dot scale riot. It won't take long to sweep the world and by then you wealthy families will be the first to bear the brunt. At this moment, Lu Duran reached out and stopped a middle-aged man next to him, saying, Old Lee, what are you doing in such a hurry? Mr. Lee, who was stopped, turned his head and said with a smile, It's your kid. A while ago, I joined the Taiping Dao with a few old brothers, and now I'm preaching together. So you're not planning to go back to your hometown this time? What kind of hometown is there? The local government is constantly increasing taxes, and those aristocratic families are also buying and selling land. They can't survive anymore when they go back. It's not like following a great virtuous teacher, having food and drink, and being able to treat and save people everywhere, said Old Lee. What exactly is this Taiping Road? Lu Duran finally couldn't help but interject. Have you been buried in studying hard lately? Old Lee said, the Taiping Dao was created by a great and virtuous teacher. It is a true and righteous way that can help those who are devout, honest, and obedient have no illness or disaster, and can even prolong their lives. Nowadays, there are believers of our sect distributed all over the world, and I don't know how many of them there are. Moreover, every household worships portraits of great and virtuous teachers at home. I am now devoutly following the leader's teachings in order to obtain his old man's talisman, so that no matter what illness I may have in the future, I don't have to worry. I don't know if the great sage and virtuous master has arrived this time, 
Lu Bei asked from a side view at this moment. If you could see Zhang Jiao, get to know him better now. In the future, when it comes to combat, you can also have a few more chances of winning. That's not true. The Xianliang sure just sent a clone over, Mr. Li began to talk incessantly. The Xianliang sure is an old man who can do anything, such as turning stones into gold, spreading beans into weapons, and summoning wind and rain. He's just a living immortal. It can be seen that Mr. Li highly admires great teachers, and excitedly assists with various postures while speaking. Really? Have you seen all of what you said? Lu Bei waved his hand and gestured for him to stop first. Um, this is it, that's not it. Old Li lowered his head awkwardly. Old Li, haven't you seen what you said as if you had seen it with your own eyes? Lu Duran said in silence. Chapter 3 The court will solve these problems, this. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Listen to me, I'll tell you what. It's rumored that the great sage and virtuous master has a handsome appearance, but the once you star in the sky has descended to earth. Old Lee continued with a gesture. Have you ever seen the great sage and virtuous master? Lu Bei said again at this moment. Well, I haven't seen it yet. Old Lee couldn't help but take a resentful look at Lu Bei. What's wrong with this person? Why does he keep dismantling our platform? It seemed like he felt the ridicule from everyone around him, and Old Lee suddenly became a little angry. He pointed to the refugees behind him and said, Although I haven't seen them before, many of us here have seen the great sage. How did you actually join the Taiping Road? Someone asked curiously at this moment. A few days ago, my family's land was forcibly occupied by the local gentry, and they even sent people to catch me everywhere. I had no choice but to escape from my hometown with a few other old brothers. Unexpectedly, I fell ill after being caught in a rain on the way. At this moment, I rushed to Taiping Road. The leader took out a talisman and asked me to boil mixed water and drink it. In just two days, my illness was all cured, so we joined Taiping Road together as a reward for their life.saving kindness. After finishing his speech, Old Li's eyes were filled with tears and his tone became even more excited. Lu Bei and his companions looked at each other upon hearing the words. This heartwarming gesture made Lu Bei feel a desire to join the sect. Due to Mr. Li's preaching, two of the onlookers gathered around, dressed in gorgeous attire. Although they were not of the highest quality, they could still be considered as wearing brocade. At this moment, one of the people spoke up and asked, you can consider this Taiping Dao as a private preaching. Does the court ignore this? Upon hearing these words, Old Li was immediately displeased. We have not done anything wrong in preaching, and your majesty has long known about this matter and has not said that we should not preach. Moreover, even in the palace, there are many adults who believe in our religion. After speaking, Old Li turned around and left, perhaps feeling a bit angry. He no longer paid attention to these people here, and the two men in brocade didn't care either. Instead, they started chatting with each other. How do you feel? Brother Su, this Taiping Road should be okay, right? Brother Zhang, do you want to join Taiping Dao? I do have some ideas. Upon hearing their conversation, Lu Bei smiled slightly and shook his head but his shaking of his head happened to be seen by the two of them. One of them looked at Lu Bei in confusion and asked, I dare to ask this brother, why is he shaking his head? After looking at the two people in front of him, Lu Bei whispered, this peaceful path is not that simple. It can be said that it is very complex. I advise both of you to think twice before taking action. Oh. I don't know what kind of complex method it is. At this moment, not only did the two of them look at Lu Bei, but even Lu Duran and his friends looked over together. Lu Bei was not afraid of the situation and spoke up, let's not talk about the abilities of this great and virtuous teacher for now. It's really scary to just say that this person gathers so many believers. Because so many people gather together, it will inevitably generate power, and the greater the power, the more difficult it is to let go, 
and naturally the mood will become different. Speaking of which, there are so many people under your command, eating, drinking, and playing with you, hoping to follow you to become famous. After all, who doesn't want to climb the ranks of the dragon and become a phoenix? Who doesn't want high positions and high salaries? It will be difficult to get off the horse by then. To be honest, what Liu Bei said is not an exaggeration at all. At this time, the Taiping Road can be said to have formed a preliminary organizational scale, and even sent people to infiltrate Luoyang to observe the next movements of the court. Is what Xuanda said a bit too groundless and worrying? Lu Duran had been reading books of sages and sages since childhood, and instantly understood Lu Bei's meaning that there were no followers of the Taiping Road nearby, otherwise it might be troublesome to be heard. As the saying goes, the superior hires people, the subordinate exerts force. Lu Bei said with an enigmatic expression, a person has so many believers, and this is the hearts of most people in the world. Think about Su Xiao and Kuaiji, who only had the hearts of a small county at that time and dared to rebel. What do you think would happen to a great and virtuous teacher? This statement immediately made everyone present feel scalp numb and afraid to continue talking. Huh, there's no need to worry too much. The court will solve these problems, which is not something that ordinary people like us should worry about. Lu Bei comforted several people upon seeing this. What should be worrying is the upper class. Who can explain the plan behind this yellow turban uprising, or maybe it was Lu Hong manipulating it behind the scenes. He wants to take the opportunity to eliminate some aristocratic families and clans. Who can explain the truth behind this? Brother, surprisingly, you can see the clues behind this in such a short time. I don't think you're an unknown person. I'm Su Shuang, dare you ask your surname. As a businessman, Su Shuang's sharp eyes made him realize that Lu Bei should be a scholar from a humble family. With such a status and status, they could still get to know each other. So these two people are Su Shuang and Zhang Shiping. Lu Bei knew in his heart that these two people had been selling horses all along. They could be said to be true arms dealers and important helpers for his early establishment. At this time, it was natural to politely embrace each other and salute. I dare not take it seriously, it's just my personal opinion. I am the Empress Dowager of Zhongshan Jing, with the courtesy name Xuanda for Lu Bei. It turned out that it was Brother Lu in front of me. I am Zhang Shiping. Today, I heard what Brother Lu said, it was like a sudden enlightenment. Zhang Shiping next to me also saluted at this moment. It was obvious that Lu Bei's extraordinary speech and output made the two of them dare not underestimate him, and they had already developed a desire to make friends. What you two brothers said is too exaggerated. Lu Bei quickly waved his hand and said, feeling a bit embarrassed to give such a straightforward compliment. How about we go to the tavern together for a chat? Zhang Shiping suggested at this moment. Chapter 4 this person has such an opinion that they will be determined in the future. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. At this time, Lu Bei didn't have time to chat with them. He still had a pot of porridge in his mind. Now he just wanted to hurry back to calm down, so he politely refused, it's getting late today, and I still have some things to deal with. I will visit him in person some day. Since that's the case, we will definitely sweep the bed and welcome each other. Zhang Shiping did not embarrass Lu Bei upon seeing this. After bidding farewell to each other, Zhang Shiping couldn't help but admire Lu Bei's distant figure, saying, This person has such insights, and he will definitely achieve extraordinary success in the future. Su Shuang next to her nodded in agreement. Returning to his stall, Lu Bei put away his straw shoes and carried them on his back as he walked home. From a distance, I could see a very tall mulberry tree next to the southeast corner of a courtyard. It must be the mulberry tree that witnessed Lu Bei's bold words when he was young. Lu Bei looked carefully for a moment, then shook his head with a smile and said, at first glance, it's really like a yubao-covered car. Since Lu Bei's father Lu Hong passed away, he has been living with his mother. 
The family is living extremely poor, but overall, life is still decent. But since returning from studying abroad, Liu Bei has had his own ambition in his heart, and he also wants to live a prosperous life for the wealthy second dot generation in the school. After all, who wouldn't want to live a life of luxury and extravagance? Liu Bei was lost in thought as he entered the door. Upon entering, he saw a woman named Zhuang Xianhui placing food on the table. A familiar and deep voice sounded, Bei Air is back. Did you work hard today? How much silver did you sell? To be honest, Liu Bei was somewhat uncomfortable with the sudden addition of a mother, but this discomfort immediately turned into warmth. After all, Liu Bei was an orphan in his past life and had never experienced maternal love. Now, he can be considered to have experienced the warmth of his mother. Bayer. Looking at Liu Bei in a daze, Liu's mother followed closely and shouted again. Oh, Liu Bei came to his senses and took out a few five baht coins from his pocket, handing them to Liu's mother. Mom, I sold three or four pairs of grass shoes today. Bayer, you've worked hard. Come and eat now. Liu's mother nodded upon hearing this. It's already very good to be able to sell these in the winter. This is about eating without speaking or sleeping, until after finishing dinner, Liu Bei saw that his mother looked in a good mood and spoke up. Mother, the child is not going out to set up a stall tomorrow. Why? Liu's mother looked over in surprise when she heard this. Mother, you also know that following teacher Liu can be considered as having read a lot of poetry and books. The teacher once said that there will be major events in the near future, so the child will have to do a few important things in the next few days. Liu Bei naturally couldn't confidently state what was about to happen, and at this point, he could only rely on his teacher Liu Ji to act. Liu's mother was stunned for a moment upon hearing this, although she felt a little skeptical about how serious Liu Bei could be and how much success he could achieve while studying. But since Liu Bei spoke up, it's not impossible to take a few days off. Bayer is now promising, as long as you have a decision in your own heart, it's all useless for your mother, which may cause Bayer to lose. Seeing his mother feel sad and self-blaming again, Liu Bei quickly interrupted her thoughts and said, Mother, you don't have to worry. After a while, I promise to bring you a basket of daughters-in-law. At this time, Liu Bei still had some wife-restraining attributes which happened to save him trouble. Just your poor mouth. Liu's mother was immediately amused, but she didn't know that Liu Bei had already changed, after all, no one could have imagined it. Lying on the Kong, Liu Bei felt a little uncomfortable and couldn't sleep after much thought. Finally, he sorted out his thoughts and prepared for the next step. No matter what year, no matter what you do, money is essential. Without money, it can be said that it is difficult to move forward. And I'm sure I can't go anywhere now, after all, the Peach Blossom 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 Festival is coming up soon. Missing this big opportunity is really a trap for me. But as an ordinary and poor loser, this is a feudal society, how can I make money? After much thought, Liu Bei could only think of the standard set for the time travel. In the standard set for travelers, gunpowder can be said to be completely unfamiliar to oneself. As for papermaking, it seems that Kai Luan from the Eastern Han Dynasty had already improved a bit. So all that's left is glass and soap. Glass seems to be made of sand through high temperature in my memory. As for the final soap, I also know a little bit. After all, as a distinguished VIP user of a certain Lu, these four tools of wealth creation have detailed tutorials in many novels. I also learned about them from reading novels at that time, so now I can practice them myself. As for the issue of sales, Lu Bei expressed no concern at all. Zhang Shiping and Su Shuang, whom he saw today, were just ready. Made runners. At this thought, Lu Bei suddenly chuckled, his smile appearing unusually lewd. The next day, after Liu Bei woke up, he started building the stove. This time we need to build two stoves at once, one for burning charcoal and the other for refining sand. How can I do this physical work alone? Liu Bei fooled Liu Duran, who was currently studying, 
directly from his uncle's house. Previously, Liu Bei was hesitant to start his own family with his uncle Liu Yuan because his uncle's family was relatively wealthy and supported his own family from time to time, which made his aunt feel a bit unhappy and often complained about it. Once my aunt couldn't help but complain to my uncle, we are always from two families. You can only support us once or twice. Why do we do this every three to five days? Uncle replied, look at this child. He's not just an ordinary person. He's definitely going to shine in the future. You need to learn to have a long dot term perspective. After this incident, my aunt gradually changed her arrogant and dissatisfied attitude and began to treat Liu Bei better. Qing Ming outing and happy reading. Charge 100 and get 500 VIP coupons. Immediate recharge, activity period. April 4th to April 6th. Chapter 5 Shwanda, you are no longer a big deal, cut. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. It is common for Liu Bei to start his own business with Liu Yuan now. Shwanda, what should I go to the river to move? Liu Duran still had some confusion. Go pick up some pebbles and move some sand, clay, and so on. The two chatted while walking towards the river. Quickly arrived at the riverbank, the modern river water was completely incomparable to the river water here. The river water was rippling with blue waves, clear and bottomless, exceptionally clean. The tired two picked up the river water and started drinking. After drinking water, Liu Bei looked at the river and began to examine his appearance, realizing that he was indeed born with a different appearance. Under his handsome face, although his ears did not droop, they were quite large, although the arms are not over the knee, they are also quite long, which are larger than normal people. No wonder Liu Bei was able to receive enthusiastic support from everyone in the school and thrive. This appearance has added a lot of cohesion to Liu Bei, and coupled with his kind heart and dark belly, who doesn't like it. Seeing this, Liu Bei felt relieved. His appearance was not as described in romance, with his hands over his knees and ears hanging down his shoulders. Upon careful consideration, if that were the case, he would be either an ape or a monster. Shwanda, are these enough? Honest Lu Duran had already packed a lot of pebbles and sand. Enough, enough. Lu Bei quickly waved his hand. Then they dug two bamboo baskets of yellow soil and returned to Lu Bei's home. Who? 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 The sand and soil brought up from the river were neatly piled up, and the two of them were already sitting beside, exhausted and panting. Lu Bei is fine, his body and bones still have some strength, but Lu Duran is already too tired to get up. After taking a break, Lu Duran turned his head to look at Lu Bei and said, Shwanda, what are you doing? We're going to have such a big battle. It's all up to Lu Bei to make something, whether he can get rich in the future or not. He stood up and brought a vat of water over, then began to mix it with mud. After the mud was settled, Lu Bei took out a flat wooden board, layer by layer of pebbles and mud, and slowly built it up. Lu Duran beside him couldn't help much and could only watch curiously. Soon, the half-meter high stove was set up, and Lu Bei lit a bonfire inside, waiting to dry the moist soil. While waiting, Lu Bei began to build a stove for refining sand again. This stove should be careful and not make any mistakes. After all, the glass produced is meant to be dedicated to the ten eternal attendants, especially Zhang Rang. As long as the bribe is done and he makes some contributions during the Yellow Turban Uprising, isn't his official position safe? Thinking of this, Liu Bei became even more careful, gradually blocking the gaps in the stove. It was not easy to block the gap between the stoves. Liu Bei got up, wiped the sweat off his head, and couldn't help complaining in his heart. It's really troublesome in these days. You can't cut too much hair, and there is no toilet paper when you go to the toilet. Alas, when I unify the world, I will cut my head at the first time. Turning to the leisurely Lu Duran, he said, you go to the market and pick up some seashells, I'll be useful. Unexpectedly, Lu Duran rolled his eyes and said, you don't need to pick it up, 
I have a better way. Oh. What's the solution? Lu Bei became curious. As long as I shout in the market, Lao Mo, I want to eat seashells, someone will bring them to me. Lu Bei was speechless, do you think you are Gao Qiqiang? Unfortunately, Lu Duran still stood still and extended his right hand, do you know I'm not? Then why don't you bring the money over quickly? Well, Lu Bei felt a bit sore, but he still took out his savings from many years. These dozen or so five bot coins, Duran should save some money and bring some fat back. In this era where we can't even have enough to eat, is it a bit wasteful to use our own fat to make soap? Forget it, I can't bear to let go of the child and the wolf. Lu Bei shook his head and said he didn't need this little money. The steps to make sand come to mind. Just heat the sand, limestone, and alkali in a certain proportion to over 1400 degrees Celsius, as if it will continue to burn for several hours. After igniting the fire for half a day, Lu Bei finally realized that this stove couldn't reach over 1400 degrees Celsius. Isn't it finished? Forget it, go to Zhang Shiping and Su Shuang's place tomorrow to take a look. Now let's burn some charcoal first. Making charcoal is simple, ignite it, and after the wood is almost cooked, Lu Bei will seal the stove and turn it into charcoal when open tomorrow. During the waiting time, Lu Duran also returned. After taking the shells, Lu Bei placed them in the fire and burned them fiercely. Shuanda, you're no big deal now. Don't let these trivial matters lead you astray. Lu Duran squatted on the side, watching with nothing to do. You're no big deal, Lu Bei retorted, still busy. This is to make soap. Burn the shells and crush them into powder, and these minerals and trace elements can absorb dirt. Soap. Trace elements. Although Lu Duran couldn't understand, he was unaware of it. Mmm. Lu Bei nodded without saying anything to explain. In ancient times, it seems that there were also soap horns, but I don't know what they were made from. Lu Bei also fired some plant ash, whose function is to provide alkaline substances, so that they can undergo saponification reaction together. He boiled these things with water, then filtered them twice and set them aside for later use. The next step is to boil the fat with some water until the fat is almost gone, remove the residue, and wait for the lard to cool. After cooling, add the lard to the prepared alkaline water. Crush some coarse salt and add it to improve the hardness and durability of the soap. Finally, stir continuously in one direction until they become a paste. Put them into a bamboo mold to cool and wait quietly for three days. Once they have cooled and solidified, they are called soap. Get it done. After a day's rest, Lu Bei arrived at Zhang Shiping's mansion and waited at the entrance before the butler came out. My grandfather went to Jizhou a few days ago, and there are dozens of horses for sale in the horse market over there. It turned out that he was going to buy a horse, but Lu Bei had no choice but to shake his head and leave. It seems that these things still have to be sold by the Mi family. Qingming outing and happy reading. Charge 100 and get 500 VIP coupons. Immediate recharge, activity period. April 4th to April 6th. Chapter 6. Don't underestimate this thing. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Three days later, Lu Bei took out the cooled soap and casually cut it off. He washed his hands and clothes and said, well, it's really good. This thing is really practical. This time standing behind Lu Bei, it was no longer Lu Duran, but Jian Yong. Xuanda, how did you start studying these things? Jian Yong and Lu Bei were childhood friends who grew up together, and he was well versed in poetry and books. He was also born into a wealthy family in the local area, and he was impressed by Lu Bei's personality charm from a young age, so he often followed behind Lu Bei to help him. In the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, two people named Jun and Chen were actually close friends from the same hometown and also Lu Bei's right-hand man. They had been wandering around with Lu Bei and were skilled in debating and lobbying. 
And today Jian Yong came because Lu Bei hadn't come to find him for quite some time, thinking that Lu Bei had something busy lately. He he Xianhe, don't underestimate this thing. It will be of great use to me in the future. Upon hearing this, Lu Bei smiled and then started to make the stove, but unfortunately, he couldn't make the glass himself. Mainly because the temperature of the stove cannot reach, we can only consider it when we have money. Jian Yong looked at the ugly soap in front of him, then looked at Lu Bei again and said, Will you help me in the future? At this moment, Lu Bei turned his head and found that there was no one around, and his own yard was quite large. The sound of conversation would definitely not be heard by the outside world, so he said with confidence, I don't know what Xian he thinks about this peaceful road. I think it's quite good, and its leader, the great sage teacher, practices medicine, treats the people and preaches in various places, and even allows the people who join the sect to have food and drink. Jian Yong was inexplicably asked by Lu Bei. So you just need to practice your medicine, why do you still need to vigorously develop believers? Upon hearing this, Lu Bei asked again. This. Lu Bei's question left Jian Yong speechless, as churches of this nature have existed throughout history and countless rebellions have occurred. We both know that the current court is dominated by incompetent and corrupt eunuchs, and corrupt officials run rampant. Major aristocratic families and clans are constantly annexing land and oppressing the people. In addition, recent natural and man-made disasters have led to public resentment and hardship, so do you think Zhang Jiao, who has so many believers, would not do anything? Jian Yong, who was originally lying paralyzed on the ground, immediately stood up and stuttered, is this going to rebel? So what Shuanda means is this horn going to rebel? In fact, he didn't expect it to be just an ordinary conversation. Lu Bei even directly talked about Zhang Jiao's intention to rebel, as there were many followers of Zhang Jiao. He usually dares not even think about such things, mainly because Jian Yang's family power is not very strong, and he has no access to these hidden things. So Xianhe, let's make plans early. Lu Bei looked at Jian Yong with a smile on his face. I have always been a carefree person since I was young. In terms of personality, I am a bit arrogant, and my behavior is also a bit unrestrained. No matter who talks to me, I like to lie on the bed or chair, just because I feel comfortable, and I don't care about the likes and dislikes of others. This situation can only be tolerated by oneself. If it is placed with other feudal lords, it will definitely be pulled out every minute and not reused. Jian Yong looked at Lu Bei's confident smile in front of him, and after thinking for a while, he finally let go of his worries. He he, Shuanda, you're here. Anyway, I just need to follow you, everything else doesn't matter. Jian Yong always believed that Lu Bei was extraordinary and would definitely achieve great things in the future, after all, he was the one who had always aspired to ride the emperor's carriage since childhood. You, you, you. Upon hearing this, Lu Bei shook his head helplessly. Xuanda, I believe you must have a comprehensive plan now, right? His words actually made Lu Bei sigh, he was not prepared at all. You should know that you are a time traveler with the ability to know ahead. Anyway, there is still half a month left, and the world is going to be in chaos. I cannot leave here now, and I can only think of Tian Feng, Zhu Xu, Tian Chou, Zhao Yun, and others who can be visited nearby. Of course, I have also considered using my prior knowledge to persuade them, but now Tian Feng and Zhu Xu are both high dot ranking officials. I am just a grass shoe seller, how can I deceive them? Especially now when someone is a judge, don't drive, and Tian Cho is too far away from him. Tian Feng is also a county magistrate, so I'm afraid he may not even be able to enter the door when he goes. And Zhao Yun should still be practicing martial arts on the mountain at present. After much contemplation, only Zhang He, who joined the army and wore yellow scarves, could plan now. This also requires troops and horses to recruit. After a storm in his mind, Lu Bei could only smile bitterly and say, the little thing in your eyes is one of my preparations for the future. 
isn't it just these pieces of junk that can do anything? And that's all there is to it. Jian Yong glanced at what Lu Bei had concocted and said disdainfully. In the future, you will know that this thing can be mass.produced, Lu Bei said as he sorted it out like a treasure. Jian Yong, who still didn't understand, was about to say something more, but was suddenly interrupted by a loud shout. Big brother, quickly open the door for little brother. Zijing is here, go open the door for him. Now Lu Bei's hands are covered in mud, so he can only let Jian Yong go and greet him. Then Jian Yong came over and opened the door. At this moment, there was a young man standing outside with an average appearance and a slightly muscular figure. He was a matchmaker, with the courtesy name Anping. He had known Lu Bei since childhood, and the two of them had a close relationship. It's Xianhe. The hastily entering hand gesture was completely impolite and went straight to Lu Bei. Zijing has seen Big Brother before. Zijing is here, don't be polite, Lu Bei extended his muddy hand and signaled that he couldn't be called anymore. Hurry up and warm up in the room, and I'll go wash up first. Okay Big Brother. After Lu Bei finished washing his hands and entered the room, Jian Yongzheng and Zhao were chatting in the room. Zijing, why are you available today? Lu Bei knelt down and asked. Big brother, this time I'm here to say goodbye, he said, gesturing and bowing his hand, explaining his intention. Farewell. Lu Bei was puzzled. The family he was leading was also considered an ordinary small family. What needs to be done to leave Jizhou? It's like this, big brother. As you know, I recently became a disciple of Mr. Lain. Now that my master has been conquered by the court, I'm going to Luoyang. With a smile, he continued, my father has decided to let me follow the teacher. On the one hand, I can continue my studies, and on the other hand, I can take care of the teacher's life. Qingming outing and happy reading. Charge 100 and get 500 VIP coupons. Immediate recharge, activity period. April 4th to April 6th. Chapter 7 How could a great man be born between heaven and earth? You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Well, that's a good thing. It's also good to go out and see the world, and Mr. Lain is also a rare good teacher. You should study hard. Lu Bei nodded, realizing it was this matter. After this incident, I no longer had the opportunity to meet with Qian Zhao, and Qian Zhao was not valued by Chao Wei due to my own reasons. The journey to Luoyang is far away and the future is unknown, so I came to bid farewell to my elder brother. I don't know what year or month it will be. He gestured and looked at Lu Bei, his eyes slightly red. Zijing, I can't bear to part with you, but I can't delay your future. The journey to Luoyang is dangerous, so I must take care of myself and bring more people. Looking at the sincere little brother in front of him, Lu Bei thought to himself, the atmosphere has arrived. Should I also cry a bit? But what if I can't cry on my own? Little brother, save it. My master has also said that there will be no peace along the way, as bandits and robbers are everywhere. Big brother's words seem to have been said by the teacher, which reminds Qian Zhao of what the teacher has been saying recently. By the way, Big Brother, Xianhe, and the recently emerging Taiping Road. I heard from the teacher that there are a large number of poor people joining, and if there are too many people, it may cause accidents. Don't interfere. Coincidentally, this is the same as Big Brother's opinion. Jian Yong leaned down on the table and said excitedly. These people joined the Taiping Road just to make a living. If they could all live and work in peace and contentment, who would be willing to leave their hometowns and wander around? Lu Bei immediately pointed out the crux. Drought, earth dragons turning over, locust infestations, epidemics, and frequent natural disasters have left the Great Han with numerous wounds and holes. Some of the disaster relief supplies issued by the court have also been embezzled by corrupt officials. How many can truly reach the hands of the people? If there were a well-known governor or governor to govern, would these people no longer join the church? 
Thinking of what the teacher said, Qian Zhao wanted to know if what the teacher said was correct. It should be possible. Qian Yong said with uncertainty. Lu Bei, however, was somewhat less optimistic. It's hard to say. Many refugees are from the same place and are willing to be together. The Taiping Road provides them with food and drink, so they don't care who the emperor is today. Whoever gives them a living and a good day, they will follow who they are. Besides, your majesty the emperor takes the lead and the court is corrupt. How many good officials are there? If they don't argue with each other, most of them will be excluded. Upon hearing this, Qian Zhao pondered in his heart. It seemed that the teacher had never thought it was the fault of Emperor Lu Hong himself. This kind of thought would not exist, after all, he had instilled the idea of loyalty to the emperor since childhood. Hey, after this farewell, I don't know when I'll see you again. Qian Yong sighed. Luoyang is far away, and goodbye is endless. A great man born between heaven and earth, how can he remain depressed for a long time? The two of them were extremely excited as Lu Bei said, at a young age, we should aspire to the world's affairs, but there is no end to our progress. Isn't it for the sake of a better reunion in the future? A good man has aspirations in all directions, what Big Brother said is really deafening. The tug of war felt like Lu Bei was speaking to his heart. His childhood dream was to defend the border and protect the peace of the country. Zi Jing, as long as you make a promise, when you graduate from Luoyang, you must first come to Qingzhou to find me. Lu Bei didn't want to make his brother depressed anymore. Since we are brothers, we must share weal and woe and work together towards a common goal, which is the tone that our Shu Han should have. Ah, uh, Qingzhou. Big brother plans to develop in Qingzhou. Qian Zhao was puzzled. Yes. Lu Bei pondered for a moment, perhaps Qingzhou was better. If Big Brother hadn't made a name for himself at that time, then he would have taken the path he wanted. Compared to other states and counties, Qingzhou is more chaotic, with more remnants of yellow scarves and relatively weak Governor Jiao He, making it very suitable for one's own development. What's Big Brother talking nonsense? How could I dislike Big Brother Yuemo? After I graduate, I will definitely go to Qingzhou to assist Big Brother. He stood up excitedly, clasping his fists and showing his determination. Zi Jing. Lu Bei stepped forward and tightly clenched his fist, which was truly moved by his brotherly love and his willingness to cut corners. It was night, and the three of them lay on the Kong in Lu Bei's house, talking about the world from ancient times until very late. The next morning, he quietly stood up and stood still for a long time before leaving. Lu Bei beside him opened his eyes and silently closed them to rest. Zijing, have a smooth journey. In this way, the time quickly arrived in February. Due to the report of traitor Tang Zhou, Ma Yueni was torn apart by a car, and insiders Feng Yu, Su Feng, and others were all arrested. Zhang Jiao was forced to raise the banner of rebellion ahead of time. The heavens are already dead, and the yellow sky should stand. At the age of Jia Zi, the world is in good fortune. Accompanied by a loud slogan, Zhang Jiao proclaimed himself as the Heavenly Lord General and ordered his second brother Zhang Bao to be the Earth Lord General and his third brother Zhang Liang to be the Human Lord General. There are hundreds of thousands of followers under it, with 36 different factions established, with tens of thousands of generous people and thousands of small factions. Each faction has its own commander, also known as a general. Due to the fact that all the rebels wore yellow scarves, they were called the Yellow Turban Army. At the beginning of the uprising, the Yellow Turban Army had a great momentum, and the people joined one after another. Some enlisted as believers, while others sent clothes and food, which led to the rapid development of the Yellow Turban Army. Eight out of the thirteen provinces of the Great Han Dynasty responded in unison. After conquering the city and seizing land, these yellow scarves burned the government, slaughtered corrupt officials, and distributed all the gold and silver that were seized to the people, which were greatly praised by the people. 
This made the early Yellow Turban Rebellion unstoppable, and even the official army suffered consecutive defeats, unable to resist the fervent wave of the Yellow Turban Rebellion. Officials from all over the country have also given their heads, including Liu Wei, the governor of Guanyang, Guasun, the governor of Yuzhou, and others. Local officials who were killed by the Yellow Turban have been in constant flow. For a moment, the world shook and the court and the public were shocked. At this time, Emperor Liu Hong had just caught a beautiful palace made from the garden, performing piston movements, and was about to spew fire. Which palace made are you from? Liu Hong looked pale at the thin and weak woman beneath him. Look at this ball, it's big and white. Your Majesty, my servant, I am from the Chrysanthemum Palace. The maid blushed and pretended to be excited, saying. Not bad, not bad. Your bifurcated obscene pants are very creative, keep it up. Lu Hong was interrupted as he continued to reward her. Your Majesty, Mr. Zhang Rang and Mr. Tai Wei are requesting an audience outside. A maid hurriedly ran in, lowered her head, and reported that she had become accustomed to such scenes. Qing Ming outing and happy reading. Charge 100 and get 500 VIP coupons. Immediate recharge, activity period. April 4th to April 6th. Chapter 8. The situation is not good. We should quickly send troops to eliminate it. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Upon seeing Lu Hong come out, Grand Commandant Yang Si slowly and leisurely arched his hand, while ten constant attendants Zhang Rang knelt down and prostrated himself. I, the old minister, servant, pay my respects to your majesty. Get up, father, Yang Aiching, why are you so eager to see me? Lu Hong asked in confusion. In general, these two people will not disturb themselves unless something important happens. I report to your majesty. Regarding the incident of the Yellow Turban Rebellion, Zhang Rang couldn't quite articulate it. After all, when His Majesty dealt with the eunuchs such as Zhong Chang Shifeng, he was already very angry, and he finally managed to get rid of the suspicion. Yang Cai was quick-witted and said, Your Majesty, there are a total of five to six hundred thousand rebellious Huangjin people who have launched a rebellion in the seven states and twenty-eight counties, plundering the government and seizing cities and territories. They can no longer be suppressed. What? These audacious lawbreakers, haven't I given them enough yet? Lu Hong suddenly cursed. In the past, there were also rebellions by the people, but they were quickly suppressed. I didn't expect so many people to rebel this time. Send my decree to convene a meeting of ministers. Lu Hong sent someone to notify the officials, while he calmly took Yang Cai and Zhang Rang to the council palace. Soon, the officials gathered at the council palace. Long live the emperor, long live. Get up. Lu Hong was annoyed by these people now, and none of them shared my worries. Yang Aiching, could you tell everyone about the current situation? Yes, your majesty, Yang Cai stood up first. Since the rebellion of the Yellow Turban Bandits, many officials from various states and counties have surrendered, and some officials have been forcibly attacked and brutally killed. Now, the Yellow Turban rebels have approached Luoyang. The courtiers who spoke at the banquet were like frying pan, whispering and discussing from side to side. These lawless people are simply lawless. The situation is not good, we should quickly send troops to eliminate it. Yang Cai waved his hand and everyone fell silent. The current military strength of the court is not enough to suppress such a large dot scale rebellion at the same time. Do you have any good ideas to propose? Since the imperial court's military strength is insufficient, it is possible to recruit righteous soldiers within the boundaries of each state and county, and cooperate with the official army in combat. Situ Yuan Hui took the opportunity to reveal his plan with Yang Cai and others. Well, this could be a good solution, Lu Hong thought to himself, as long as the military pay didn't have to be paid out by himself. Your Majesty, 
I suggest lifting the party ban and pardoning all party members, so that they can also mobilize troops and perform meritorious deeds, so as to quickly eliminate the yellow turban. Elang Huangfu Song stood up. Your Majesty, absolutely not. Your Majesty, think twice. The eunuch forces under the stage first looked at each other and then stood up to oppose, with a considerable number of people. After finally establishing a party ban, eunuchs had the opportunity to resist the scholars. If the party ban was lifted, the balance between the two sides would be broken. Eunuchs were originally not allowed to participate in court politics, but Lu Hong disrupted this principle in order to balance the interests of scholars. Unfortunately, the eunuchs' words were of no use this time because they couldn't go to the battlefield to quell the rebellion. Seeing this, Lu Hong was very helpless and could only prioritize solving the problem of rebellion. Send my decree, pardon all the party members, and let them lead troops to quell the rebellion. Zhang next to him gave Zhao Zhong a glance, how could the party members easily seize power? Since we can't stop it, let's add more obstacles to them. Zhao Zhongxin led the Divine Assembly and stepped forward to speak, Your Majesty, I suggest that you take out the stable horses in the Western Garden and give them to the soldiers. At the same time, let the court officials donate their good horses, armor, bows and crossbows, etc. to the court for the purpose of suppressing rebellion. Okay, okay, I agree. How could Lu Hong miss out on such a good thing? Without waiting for the opposition of the officials, he quickly responded. In addition, Lu Ji was appointed as the North Zhonglang General, Huang Fu Song as the Left Zhonglang General, and Zhu Ju as the Right Zhonglang General. The Northern Army's 5th Colonel and Sanha Cavalry were dispatched in two separate routes to suppress rebellions in various places. I will obey. Lu Ji, Huang Fu Song, and Zhu Ju stood up to receive the order. So the imperial edict was issued, and General Lu Ji of Bishonglang led 50,000 troops and horses towards Jizhou. Huang Fu Song and Zhu Ju each led 30,000 troops and horses towards Ingchuan. Shortly thereafter, a conscription edict was issued to various regions. Each state and county can recruit troops on their own to resist the rebels, if there are people who know the strategy and dare to fight, they can also organize volunteers to assist the officers and soldiers in conquering the rebels. Yuzhou, Prefect's Mansion Governor Lu Yen looked at the edict issued by the Imperial Court in his hand and his face became somewhat bitter. The Imperial Army is insufficient. Lu Zhonglang is going to suppress the bandit leader Zhang Jiao, so there may not be any remaining troops to help us. The reason why Lu Yan's face turned bitter was because a group of thousands of yellow turban rebels were looting in the Liangxiang area, and these were only the vanguard soldiers of yellow turban. Afterwards, there was also the 50,000 yellow turban led by Grand Marshal Ching Ziyuan. This is a total of 50,000 soldiers and horses. Most of the troops in Yuzhou are now facing off against Wu Huan in the north to prevent them from heading south. There are only a few thousand troops that our side can use, and there is indeed a slight disparity in military strength. At this moment, Captain Zhou Jing of the anti-thief school advanced, Governor Lu, there are many soldiers and horses with yellow scarves, and our army is powerless. Why not recruit some righteous soldiers to assist in defense? Ah, that's all for now. I'll leave this matter to Captain Zhou. Lu Yen sighed. If you don't die in this disaster, I must write to your majesty and become an official in Ijo, which is much more comfortable than Yuzhou. Soon, the recruitment list for volunteer soldiers arrived in Zhuxian. Upon receiving the news, Lu Bei was overjoyed and his newbie gift package was finally ready to arrive. I hurriedly packed my things and walked towards the place where the rankings were distributed. When Lu Bei came over, there were already many people standing in front of the announcement. Lu Bei carefully looked around and did not find any trace of Zhang Fei, so he began to wait for opportunities while reading the announcement. Unexpectedly, looking at it, he became mesmerized. The inscription on the leaderboard describes that the rebellious Yellow Turban Army had a great power, capturing many counties and cities, and killing many court officials. 
the momentum of Huang Jin is a bit fierce. This is also the only opportunity for one to achieve success and success, and one must seize it. Without the help of Guan Yu, Zhang Fei, and others, one may not be able to achieve success and success alone. Thinking of this, Lu Bei's heart surged and he couldn't help but sigh, sigh. Qingming outing and happy reading. Charge 100 and get 500 VIP coupons. Immediate recharge, activity period. April 4th to April 6th. Chapter 9. Bring me some wine quickly, I have to hurry. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Suddenly, a person behind him shouted, since a man was born between heaven and earth, he should have contributed to the country. Why are you sighing here? Lu Bei was first surprised, followed by great joy. He came, he came, he came, he came with a gift. Turning his head, as expected, there stood a strong black man behind him, over eight feet tall, with a leopard head and a tiger-like body. Lu Bei himself enjoys making friends, especially since he is still his third younger brother in the future. He bowed first and then said, Do you dare to ask the noble name of a hero? The strong man didn't hesitate and said boldly, My surname is Zhang Mingfei, my courtesy name is Ida. I have lived in Shua County for generations, and my family has several hectares of fertile land. My current livelihood is selling wine and killing pigs and I specialize in making friends with the brave warriors of the world. Who is my brother? Why do you sigh here? My surname is Lu Mingbei, my courtesy name is Xuanda, and I am a relative of the Han family. Now that I see the Yellow Turban Rebellion rampaging across the country, plundering prefectures and counties, with the intention of sweeping the central plains and supporting the Han family, I feel helpless and powerless, unable to speak on my own which is why I sigh and speak out. Lu Bei said in a sincere tone that he really wanted to help the Han dynasty, but the Han dynasty must be the final say. I believe I have done much better than some emperors. Originally, they were Han family members, but they could travel together. Thinking of this, Zhang Fei loudly invited him, Brother, to be honest, I just read this list and also thought of joining the army. Why don't we go together? All right, heroes are truly loyal and righteous. Lu Bei was overjoyed and finally took a big step forward. Zhang Fei was praised by Lu Bei and felt that he and Lu Bei were like dot minded. He immediately became happy and said, Ha ha ha, you're welcome, brother. There's a tavern over there. How about I treat you to a big drink? Please. Lu Bei reached out and gestured. Please. The two of them walked into the tavern together and ordered wine and meat. After just a few drinks, they were chatting happily. There was a person pushing a small car outside who walked to the door of the tavern, left the car aside, and said to the bartender, Bring me some wine quickly. I have to rush to join the army. Don't miss out on something important. Upon hearing someone join the army, Lu Bei and Zhang Fei turned their heads and saw that this person was nine feet long, slightly taller than Zhang Fei, with a face like a heavy jujube, a long bearded chin, red phoenix eyes, and a reclining silkworm eyebrow, exuding a majestic aura. It's him. Lu Bei's mouth curved slightly upwards, and his second younger brother also appeared. Even Zhang Fei felt that this person was not an ordinary person. Lu Bei quickly stood up and walked up to this person, is this brave warrior going to join the army? Guan Yu looked at the person in front of him in surprise and said, exactly. Ha ha ha, so do we. Why don't heroes sit and drink together? Lu Bei pointed to his desk mate Zhang Fei and happily invited him. After glancing at the two of them, Guan Yu stroked his beard and thought to himself that he had just joined the army with some support. He nodded and agreed, okay. So, Lu Bei sat down with the strong man and drank a full glass. He arched his hand and asked, do you dare to ask the noble name of the strong man? After drinking a cup, the three of them clearly felt a similarity in temperament. Guan Mingyu, with the surname Guan Mingyu and the courtesy name Changsheng, was later changed to Yun Chang. He was a kind-hearted person from Hadong, 
but because there was a powerful local bully who bullied and oppressed the people, Guan killed him. He had been wandering in the Jianghu for five or six years. Guan Yu told the two of them about his murder and escape, while silently observing their reactions. It's time to kill. Lu Bei nodded. Another bully, I wish I could kill them all, Zhang Fei said indignantly. After seeing the reaction of the two, Guan Yu completely let go of his guard and drank a cup of satisfaction together, continuing, I heard that the government is recruiting volunteers here, so I came to recruit, hoping to kill the enemy and make achievements on the battlefield. Is this unfortunate? After listening, Lu Bei and Zhang Fei exchanged a smile and said, Ha ha ha, good guy, we thought of going together. Are you serious? Guan Yu suddenly became happy. I wonder how the two heroes are called. Before Lu Bei could answer, Zhang Fei, who was impatient, took the lead in introducing himself, this is a Han family relative with the surname Lu Mingbei and the courtesy name Xuanda. My surname is Zhang Mingfei and the courtesy name Ida. Lu Bei smiled in his heart, now it's safe, someone has promoted it for him. Sure enough, as soon as Zhang Fei mentioned the four words, Han family, in his mouth, Guan Yu looked at Lu Bei in surprise and said even more happily, then let's go join the army together. In the blink of an eye, Zhang Fei saw three people gathered together, along with a Han family member. His mind suddenly changed, and it was better to recruit volunteers than to join the army. So Zhang Fei stood up and suggested, whether you're busy or not, we'll discuss the matter of joining the army later. My Zhuangzi is not far from here, why don't we go to our humble abode first and discuss it in the long run? As soon as he spoke, Lu Bei nodded in agreement. It seemed that there were also inaccuracies in historical records. Zhang Fei was not as rough as he had imagined, and his mind was rather delicate. Okay. The three of them hit it off at once, finished drinking the wine on the table, and set off together for Zhang Fei's estate. Wait a moment, I still have a cart of mung beans. I'm going to push the cart. Guan Yu, who walked out, pushed his own cart. Zhang Fei couldn't wait to go back and drink. Feeling that the car was a bit delayed, he reached out and grabbed a handful from his bag. He pinched it hard in his hand and said, What mung beans? Look, it's bean powder, it's bean powder. Then sell it to the shop at a low price based on the bean powder. Guan Yu smiled, and this guy's strength was not small, worth making friends with. As the three of them walked into Zhuangzi, Zhang Fei shouted loudly, Butler Zhang, Butler, hurry up and prepare the food and drink. I want to have a big drink with these two brave warriors. The butler quickly prepared a large table of wine and meat, and the three of them drank and ate meat while chatting happily. There was a feeling of mutual agreement and meeting late. Guan Yu and Zhang Fei had not had such a great time drinking, and as expected, they got drunk. Seeing this, Lu Bei took off his clothes and put them on, and the two of them fell asleep on the ground. The next day, Lu Bei, who had regained consciousness, also had a thin quilt on his body, which seemed to have been covered by Zhang Fei when he woke up in the morning. At this moment, the sound of fighting came from the open space outside, along with Zhang Fei's bold voice, Ha ha ha, good man, you really have full strength. Lu Bei quickly walked out to watch the battle, only to see the two of them on the open ground, coming and going, punching and kicking each other, fighting together, evenly matched. Not bad, your strength is not bad either, Guan Yu said while fighting. Obviously, during the fight, the two of them developed a sense of admiration for each other's strength. This also made Lu Bei, who came out to watch the battle, laugh. It seems that I am going to be a master of breakups. A few more rounds have passed, and the two are still evenly matched. Qingming outing and happy reading. Charge 100 and get 500 VIP coupons. Immediate recharge, activity period. April 4th to April 6th. Chapter 10. Is just a broken Zhuangzi, there's no such thing as. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Bang Guan Yu and Zhang Fei's wrists were pressed against each other, and they began to wrestle. They were sweating profusely and on par. 
Suddenly, one hand reached out and grabbed the fists of Guan Yu and Zhang Fei's wrestling, forcefully separating them. The person who separated them was Lu Bei. Guan Yu and Zhang Fei stopped their punches and kicks, their eyes filled with disbelief and admiration. They didn't expect that Lu Bei was still a man of both civil and military abilities, and his strength was not weak. And this is also the effect that Lu Bei wanted to achieve, and then he arched his hand and said, Both of the brave warriors are very talented and possess extraordinary skills. Their martial arts are amazing. With the chaos in the world, heroes will emerge in times of chaos. If we go to join the army, wouldn't it be a waste of our talents? Oh. Guan is willing to hear more about it. Guan Yu looked at Lu Bei. Zhang Fei looked at Lu Bei in surprise as he thought of going with him. Nowadays, the Yellow Turban Rebellion has spread widely, and the court has ordered capable individuals in each county to recruit soldiers on their own. At this time, it is the time for us to use military force, so we do not need to be controlled by others. As long as we organize righteous soldiers to pacify the large number of yellow turbans and execute their bandit leaders, we will soon be appointed as the Marquis General. Therefore, why not take this opportunity to fight for our own future? Lu Bei said with a face full of righteousness. It's better to listen to your words than to read for ten years. Guan Yu's eyes lit up, and he didn't like to obey others either. What Brother Lu said is absolutely right, but I'm just a pig slayer. I don't know what's going on in this world. Brother Lu, please tell me, I'll do whatever you want me to do. What Zhang Fei admires the most is this kind of person, not to mention that Lu Bei is still a descendant of the Han family, so he changed his title to Brother Lu. To be honest, I want to recruit some local heroes to pacify the Yellow Turban and suppress the bandits and ensure the safety of the people. However, I have fallen into trouble in my family and don't have so much money. Lu Bei said shyly. Ha ha ha, why is this difficult? My family has a lot of wealth and food. Why don't I pay to recruit some local heroes and work together with Brother Lu to achieve great things? What do you think? Zhang Fei waved his hand casually, it was a small matter. Are you serious? Lu Bei was overjoyed. I'm absolutely right. Zhang Fei patted his chest. After finishing one, Lu Bei continued to speak to Zhang Fei, actually speaking to Guan Yu next to him, but unfortunately, this single thread does not form a thread, and a single tree cannot form a forest. Only the two of us are weak on our own. At this moment, Guan Yu next to him thought for a moment and arched his hand, saying, If you don't give up, I will accompany you. It's not easy. Finally, they were convinced that the big business of the three of them could be prepared. Lu Bei, with tears in his eyes, stumbled forward and grabbed their hands, choking from the bottom of his heart. Finally, Bei has found a like-minded person. The two heroes have exceptional martial arts skills, are loyal and courageous. With you two accompanying us, we will work together, even if the road ahead is full of swords and flames, fearless. Such appreciation and sincere tone moved Guan Yu, who had been on the run for five or six years. It was the first time someone valued him so much. Zhang Fei was also moved and suggested, there is a peach orchard behind my house, where the peach blossoms are in full bloom. Why don't we kill cows, slaughter sheep, and become brothers in life and death? What do you think? That's great. Lu Bei quickly agreed. Guan is willing. Guan Yu also nodded in agreement. Okay, it's great. Zhang Fei turned his head and shouted, Butler, Butler, hurry up and prepare offerings such as cows and sheep. I want to become sworn brothers. Here. The butler responded and prepared. The offerings for worship were soon ready, and the three of them also arrived at the peach orchard in the backyard. Inside, they saw the peach blossoms blooming brightly, red as fire, and the surrounding area was full of vibrant and beautiful scenery. Hee hee, two brothers, who will we worship when we become sworn brothers later? It's natural to worship heaven and earth. To whom? 
Lu Bei couldn't help but burst into laughter, which reminded him of a modern joke. The three brothers of Tao Yuan became sworn brothers and naturally wanted to worship Guan Gong. At present, the three of them arrived at the busiest peach tree in the peach orchard and reported their ages. Lu Bei was 23 years old, Guan Yu was one year older than Lu Bei, and Zhang Fei was the youngest. But Guan Yu refused to become this big brother, and together with Zhang Fei, Lu Bei, a member of the Han family, was elected as the big brother. Three people burn incense in worship, kneel in front of a tree, pray to heaven and earth, and recite their oaths in unison. Although Lu Bei, Guan Yu, and Zhang Fei have different surnames, they will become brothers from today on. From now on, we should work together to rescue difficulties and dangers, report to the country, and bring peace at dawn. We do not expect to be born on the same day or month in the same year, but rather die on the same day or month in the same year. Heaven and earth will bear witness, and mountains and rivers will be our allies. We will stick to this throughout our lives and swear not to contradict each other. After the sworn oath, the three of them became enthusiastic and looked at the flesh and blood of the two. Although Lu Bei had initially used the hearts of Guan Yu and Zhang Fei, the bond after the oath also wrapped around him, and this thought disappeared. Second brother and third brother, I hereby swear to share weal and woe with my brothers, to share blessings, to face difficulties together, to be together for life, to live and die together. Guan Yu has been on the run in the martial arts world for so many years, and now he finally has a brother who can cut corners and feel the long-lost brotherhood. Big brother and third brother, although Guan is a martial artist, he also knows the words loyalty and righteousness well. Today, I, Guan, am fortunate enough to have two brothers. From now on, Guan's life will be the life of big brother and third brother, and I will not have any ulterior motives even if driven. The words of the two brothers moved Zhang Fei, who was standing beside him. Tears welled up in his eyes, and he said, Big brother, second brother, I'm the same. Second brother, third brother. Big brother, third brother. Big brother, second brother. We don't expect to be born on the same day, but rather die on the same day. We don't expect to be born on the same day, but rather die on the same day. Me too. The three brothers held hands tightly together. At this moment, tearful Zhang Fei choked up and said, Big brother, how did I hear someone singing? It seems that Guan also heard, this bow. Guan Yu leaned forward and looked around without anyone. Don't make a fuss. Lu Bei was deeply moved. You can also hear the song of the narration, it's really impressive. Afterwards, the three of them walked in and out together, eating at the same table, sleeping in the same bed, doing everything together, and their relationship was rapidly warming up. Seeing Lu Bei, a Han family relative, they treated themselves sincerely, and both of them died as close friends. They decided to follow Lu Bei for their entire lives and go through fire and water for their elder brother in order to repay their kindness. At the same time, the three of them were also constantly purchasing weapons, armor, horses, and other necessary items for the army. After the news of recruiting rural heroes spread, nearby young men came to invest, and soon more than 200 people gathered. On that day, Lu Bei and Guan Yu saw people moving things out of Zhuangzi back and forth. After inquiring, they fell silent. Third brother, did you sell your estate? He 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 he, it's okay, big brother. Isn't it just a ruined village? There's no more important business than brothers, Zhang Fei said casually. Third brother. Lu Bei and Guan Yu were deeply moved, while also hating their own helplessness. Qingming outing and happy reading. Charge 100 and get 500 VIP coupons. Immediate recharge, activity period. April 4th to April 6th. 